Annyeong, and welcome to Halle Juku, starring Brandon Cooper and myself, P.D. Rave. This is episode 45, The Call for Moderation. Enjoy! Buenos nachos, amigos, and welcome back to another fun episode of Halle Juku. I'm P.D. Rave, your man with no plan. Here with me, as always, is my friend, Brandon Cooper, a.k.a. King Kaz. How you doing, Kaz? I'm doing exceptionally well. I'm ready to rock and motherfucking roll. Yeah. Uh, as we start off every episode, we're going to talk about uh, what's caught our attention musically this week. Uh, Kaz, what has caught your attention musically? What have you been listening to this week? Taylor Swift. But mm-hmm. <laughs> on the uh, on the old uh east asian side of that uh there was a lot of good shit this week one of those being another release from epic high uh which was earlier this week so you we record shows usually later in the week so if something happens it's still within that week for us um i don't know why i really explained that but it's the song spoiler plus happy ending i don't know what how this is much of a of the song happy ending which is totally different <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's mainly the song spoiler yeah um but okay tease. i don't care uh, a little tease of happy ending but the song spoiler is amazing uh the concept and the video which for some people actually a lot of people didn't seem to like when i went through the youtube comments yeah um but for me in my perspective for something that was such a soulful, deep, styled song, I really, really liked the the music video for this. Um, about this guy who is in love with his girlfriend, but is becoming more and more unattentive to her, yeah. and that feeling, you know, and and just you're you're, you're giving all the signs you're giving away how this is gonna end you yeah. know that the, the idea of the spoiler it's like if you look at the lyrics like your the look in your eyes is a spoiler you know the, the way that you're you're in it you know the way you kind of look away is a spoiler is kind of you know you're you're giving me all these signs that this is coming to an end and how this is going to end so uh you're spoiling the story it's like uh, it's, it's really cool. I, I, yeah, Epic High is, has a skill for the, those ballads, this kind of like yeah. hip hop, emotional songs. I mean, they can get, you know, as, as we saw with Born Hater, they can get down and, uh, and slay you lyrically, uh, if you yeah. will. Uh, but they, they, this is one of the uh, strong suits that where they kind of have those emotional ballad songs. And I mean, it's really good. Like, I'm I'm trying not to get drawn into the song and stop talking, but it's just one of those songs. It, it, if you allow it to, it really pulls you in. It's really emotional. It's really powerful. Really good job by Epic High. One of my favorite songs right now. It's making me more and more excited for this album. Uh, this mm-hmm. is definitely going to... At this point, this is now a day one pickup for me. Um, well, it's on Spotify. Really you can all, check it out all on Spotify. The full thing is on Spotify, and I, I listened to quite a few of it, and I really, really dug it uh, yeah. off of the album. Uh, but moving on to something but else fantastic. Yeah. Um, our boy, our our favorite in the world, D-Light, uh, doing his uh, Japanese tour, releasing his, his Japanese album. Um, and this is kind of one of the songs... Uh, that is is in that that's going to come uh you know with, with the stuff that you're looking to get from from day song i think there's like a big kind of set that you could buy yeah all the all the stuff is right down there in the, yeah. the for the video uh which yeah. is actually pretty interesting with the prices and everything but this song delight uh shut up and it sticks to that Japanese thing where this is the short version of the video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where all of a sudden, well, they got a DVD off. to sell you. They got a yeah, DVD to it's sell such you. Such a good song. It's so good, and it's another emotional song. You know about about the, the things going on with love and all those kinds of things. Um, and just getting getting to hear D Sung sing, no matter what language it's in. Yeah. It's fucking good. It's, the dude can sing. It's nice to see him out of the out of the YG dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. 
Uh, but um, yeah, this is a really f- cool song. It's 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 definitely it's interesting this kind of little Japanese uh, romp because he went mm-hmm. with uh, this song, which is you know kind of uh, not too out of, out there. But this was fo- this followed up uh, a Japanese <laughs> remake of his trot song. Which yes. out, of, out of all things, Lick and yes. Listen. Like, I fucking love it, dude. You know I love Day Song doing trot. Yeah, it, but like, of all things to bring into the Japanese ma- market, trot music? That's like, <laughs> it's like, uh, sending country to Europe. Like, you know, <laughs> sending country music to Europe or some shit. Yeah, it's like, yeah. uh, it's ridiculous. But yeah, I love, I love Delight. I love Day Song. Uh, yeah. and I want Such, to see more so of him. Good, man. Please let him out of that dungeon. It, it, it wasn't his fault. He, he, yeah. he, it wasn't his fault. Dude, you can let him out I of the dungeon. I want to see him on, on variety shows and stuff. I want, I want to see him be ridiculous. I want to reunite the, the Dumb and Dumber brothers. <laughs> yeah, him. that would be, that would be awesome. But to not take away from, from Delight's music, definitely something worth going to check out. If you've been kind of missing those other unit pieces of, of Big Bang and in this anticipation for the ramp up of the possible new Big Bang album, you know, you got, you got GD stuff, you got Young stuff, you got, uh, Sungri stuff. Now you got some Delight to kind of, to kind of hold you over until we get that mm-hmm. possible new Big Bang album. Possible. Uh, yeah. but moving on to a group that did come back. Uh, yep. Two p no wrong one two a.m. <laughs> and just because we have to do it, JYP, JYP, <laughs> JYP. Uh, this is two a.m.'s days like today, which is really like it's just been a really soulful day for me <laughs> for yeah. some, a soulful week for me uh, for some reason uh, with music. Um, you got tea in your hand. <laughs> I got tea in my hand and everything. Uh, but this is just. A really, really fun, like awesome, just like the day in the life of this 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 old man, and with the backing track of Two AM song, and he's kind of mouthing the lyrics here and there, um, and it's just it's so good, like the music to pre- the progression the pig. Pre- progression of the song the vocals everything just works really well here for some reason like it just really resonates with me um 2 a.m is like 2 a.m's ballad work is just on point oh hey there joe kwan god i love joe kwan. <laughs> uh but yeah they they really kind of exhibit their vocals uh yeah. you know that's 2 a.m's job and they do it well they they are the the singers like they are the singing half they are the vocal half of uh kind of the 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 uh one day you know super group uh that they were spawned from uh but yeah and then the other fun thing is playing the find all the 2 a.m members in the video yes as you go along well i found one i found joke one (laughs) yep you can't miss Uh, him but yeah, no, it's definitely a really, really good song. And if, if you're a 2 p.m., 2 a.m. fan, it's something worth going to check out. If you're just a ballad fan, uh, and, you know, just like good Korean music, it's like, it's a, it's a good week for it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's some fun stuff. Uh, I'm going to take it into kind of a uh, different direction. I'm going to bring some of the year of the rapper stuff, you know, even oh, though shit. from a different country. Uh, this is a song that I was actually surprised that I didn't bring up. I guess it was kind of the circumstances didn't, uh, uh, warrant it. But, uh, and I, I actually looked and made sure I hadn't brought it up before, but it was a song that I had caught my attention a little while ago and then I remembered it again. Uh, mm-hmm. which is a little like Japanese hip hop crew, like a duo, uh, by the name of Cream, uh, and their track Party Chuck a Man. Uh, <laughs> and this is a stupidly catchy, fun hip hop track with the, yeah. you know, as soon as like the beat drops into their kind of their, uh, uh, hook, you just can't help but like start to kind of turn the groove back and forth. It's just like a nice little, it's a simple dance, a simple song. It's really fun. I mean, uh, we've been, o- we've been over this with, um, two chains and rollies. <laughs> like sometimes. <laughs> These silly, catchy songs just get you, and then you know you just all you got to do is you just, you, all you got to do is move your arms. Potty chicken man, potty chicken man, potty chicken man. 
uh and minami is, is actually pretty f- if, if you check out some of the actually creams other stuff where uh minami kind of uh busts out more of her singing uh style she's actually a pretty damn good singer uh yeah. and like uh that dude uh i can't i forgot his name uh your boy tracks t uh the dude with high top fade <laughs> uh mm-hmm. with the, with the eraser head uh he he he's the guy behind the beats and he's actually does a fantastic job with some of the beats and uh and this is just a fun song down to like the hook uh it's you know when he gets to the you know parties and bullshit and party and bullshit and he goes like mm. sake and sushi sake and sushi i'm like yeah sake and sushi <laughs> and sake and sushi like uh it's so much fun uh and, and like you said it's kind of like that it's similar to that two chains of rollies thing where it's like uh it's just stupidly fun and and catchy uh really kind of well done uh though i don't know if two chances and rollies is necessarily well done but but uh similarly to k to stupidly catchy uh and fun uh, go check out cream they actually have some fun songs uh aside from this one especially their latest one uh stay which is a really cool track uh but yeah party check them in bump that in the club like right now uh but moving on to something else uh a debut track this is a kind of an interesting debut of a trio a young female trio kind of a uh interesting uh little trio that kind of caught my attention i saw the video on on rk pop uh it, it, they caught my attention visually immediately uh because <laughs> they're, 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 they're kind of attractive uh but a group by the name of uh well the English name, it's confusing. The English name is Purfles. Uh, <laughs> but I can read the Hangar, uh, and you could easily call them Purples. Purples. <laughs> uh, purples. Uh, so I, I, I don't know the name. I can't explain to you the, the name or what it means or, uh, what it's supposed to be, but, uh, their song 123, the debut track. Uh, and it's, it's nothing out of the ordinary, but it's actually really well done. Like the song is really cool and kind of, uh, has a cool, like danceable rhythm to it. Uh, the, the, the ladies sing really well. Uh, and they're, they're, they're not bad to look at either. <laughs> uh, and, and they have a really cool visual and they do, they kind of hit everything on point. And it's, it's really, polished the main thing is to say is that it's a very very polished debut track and if there's one thing that i would say about this year is that is this has been the year of very very polished debut tracks and not just from the obvious you know big big wigs that would obviously have the manpower and the the influence to make you know polished. You know, obviously when you when you talk about sm they're gonna have a polished debut track if you're coming out of sm or yg or typ but non-big three you know debut groups debuting with a polished track and polished video uh is that something that, that you've noticed that you know we had it with mama moo uh, we've had yeah. it with, uh, Kiss and Cry, though they've disbanded since then, <laughs> unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we have it with this group. Uh, is that something you noticed? Is something that, that caught your attention? Well, I mean, you would, you would expect at this point, like, with generally how long a lot of these groups tend to train now, um, and trying to match the styles of music that are out, you know, you're going to get a lot more polished products than probably what you would have got four or five years ago when some other groups, you know, debuted and stuff like that. So we're going to start seeing a lot more polish and debuts uh, than we used to. The things that's going to really start to stand out is stage work for, for a lot of these groups. Like, you know, because performing in a video is one thing, but how you perform on stage is what's really going to sell you in Korea, you know? Um, mm-hmm. and, and it's going to get the you on those shows. music shows and, yeah, and the music shows, you know, so, you know, a good video debut, definitely a nice, a nice catchy song. Uh, it, it didn't instantly register with me, but it's still a really good song. Um, uh, but I, I kind of want to hear more from them. And like you said, they're, they're pretty. So <laughs> you mm-hmm. always want to see more of them. Um, mm-hmm. and that helps. Mm hmm. 
Uh, yeah, it, it, they, I've seen a little bit of their music shows and they, they do pretty well, kind of, uh, they're pretty polished. They've got good backup dancers, <laughs> uh, and they do, pre- they do a pretty good job. So, uh, hoping for good stuff from them. Good luck fighting. Uh, but lastly, uh, mm-hmm. we're going to talk about, I'm going back to Japan. Uh, we're going to talk about a group that, that, back. Uh, like a J-pop group that, uh, that has started to kind of catch my attention a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, E-Girls, yep. uh, I've mentioned them before, I think, and I've, I've put a video, I've uh, mentioned a video by them before, uh, yeah, E-Girls, you did, you uh, did two videos of, I think the same song, actually, I think you did three videos by them, like, kind of overall, but, uh, yeah. it was a dance mix, then the song, and then another song by them. Yeah. Uh, and E Girls is an interesting group, and I don't know if I've provided context, and I've I've learned a little bit more since I, I think even since I, I mentioned them, uh, they are kind of the female counterpart to a very well known group, uh, at least to other people uh, by the name of Exile, uh, mm-hmm. big t- like that's a big uh, J pop group right there, uh, and they're kind of the, the the they're meant to be the female counterpart, thus E Girls being Exile's girl unit. Uh, this is happiness, one of the subunits from E Girls and the song E, uh, Seek a Light. Uh, again, J pop, it's, it's, uh, a short, shortened version. It stops in the middle of it <laughs> once it starts getting its stride. Uh, but it's a, it's a pretty cool song. It's not out of this world. Uh, but it's a really well made song. But the main thing that uh, uh, continues, consistently catches my attention, continues in this video is, how how good and interesting and well done the dancing is is uh, for these for this group. Yeah. Like I mean that's the thing that's the thing you originally showcased was their dancing video yeah. um, and how you know how they get down and yeah. you know this is just kind of more of it. Yeah, it, it's like another example of kind of a really polished, really well done dancing, but that doesn't look uh stiff. Yeah, it's polished, but it's not stiff. It's very kind of creative, very energetic. Like, uh, you know, I guess creative isn't right, <laughs> but it's kind of creative and, but it's very well energetic. It's, uh, very polished. The outfits could use a little work there, but, uh, that's, that's <laughs> beside the point. <laughs> that, that, uh, these, these are lovely young girls. They, you don't need to put them in circus tents. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, another example, I think, uh, it's gonna be interesting. I'm kinda digging this, the stuff that I'm seeing from, from the e-girls camp. Uh, especially, uh, from, just on a dancing tip. And with some really fun songs to kind of accompany them, uh, that you can't really complain about. Like, <laughs> you can't complain about songs. They're, they're really good. Uh, but yeah, happiness. Seek a light. Uh, uh, uh have you come and have you set, set, uh, checked out more e girls uh, since like we've uh, not about? not much because we've still been stuck trying to uh, reinitiate myself into the AKB universe, <laughs> <laughs> um, which is it just a fucking project in itself. You need like a fucking you need a like, user's guide for that shit. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, like a side manual, and then you need a, like a how like. Uh, what were those books called? The like um, strategy the AK, guide, AKB for dummies, <laughs> <laughs> AKB forty eight for dummies. Yeah, it, or the, it, the uh, Toby games or what? Were it, what the, the 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 games uh, strategy guide. Right. You get the special mm-hmm. edition strategy guide with all the maps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this time it's the maps of uh, of all the different uh, forty eight groups. The forty eight verse mm-hmm. mapped out. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, we, but yeah, the AKB 48. Yeah, that's good. That's a, that's a ta- tangled web to try to weave through. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I, I might try to see if I can catch a little bit of your knowledge, Steve. If you, can, if you're able to parse yeah. it, I'll try to benefit from that. Uh, I, will, I will explain to you one day the AKB verse and <laughs> 48 verse. Yes. Uh. Cause you gotta have, you have SKE too, and you had to have all the other, you know. Uh, yeah, at one point they even had an a, a adult girl group that was supposed to be more oh, yeah, sexy I remember that. and risque. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that will be for for future things. 
right. uh, but yeah, e girls, go and check them out. Some more fun stuff yeah. if you can. I mean, go check out all the music this week. Like, like this is one of those weeks where we didn't struggle to find good music. <laughs> you know, I had like, to like I had to like eliminate some songs. <laughs> Like really good music kind of fell into our laps. It, it almost got to the point where I wanted to put in a bad song just to kind of break it up. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just one of those weeks. We had really good music. So definitely, definitely, definitely. If you're an East Asian pop culture fan, there is stuff for you to go out and, and check out of all mm-hmm. different ranges. And, you know, and, and talk about it and share yes. it with your, your friends. Let us and know then, what you think. And if you find some stuff that you might have, uh, might have missed, uh, might have gone by by our radio, ra- not radio, radar, gone <laughs> under our radar, if I can construct a sentence, uh, let us know. Uh, we love hearing new music, different examples. If you can find a full version of the music video, please let us send it. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the music, uh, segment. That's it with, with, with what has caught our attention this week musically. Uh, we're gonna head on over to our headlines now, so join us over there. Headlines. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our headlines segment. We get into the meat and potatoes of what's going on in the East Asian pop culture world. Let's get down to it. Uh, we start off with something interesting uh, that I'm sure even non-East Asian pop culture fans have noticed. Uh, 21's I Am The Best gain spins at U.S. radio stations. Uh, for those that are not unaware, uh I am the best has been used uh, as the song for one of the Microsoft Surface uh, ads, and has caught people's attention because it's well, it's a catchy ass song. <laughs> uh, and apparently, New York and Boston stations have adopted the Korean banger in their, into their playlists. Twenty uh, One's "I Am the Best" continues making impressions in America as it begins picking up spins on stage at radio. In the week ending October nineteenth, the electronic hip hop hybrid single was played 24 times on WBMP New York and 14 times on WODS Boston. Both stations published accompanying articles on their respective websites about the band and I Am The Best with WODS Boston telling readers to listen for the song on air. Uh, This comes uh, just two weeks after I Am The Best earned its best sales week yet in America. You know, obviously from the Microsoft Surface Pro 3, you know, kind of how it goes. Song, a catchy song is on a commercial. Everybody's like, hey, that's, that's a catchy song. I want to listen to that song. And they buy the song and then it becomes a popular song. But this time it's one of our K pop songs. <laughs> uh, what, what was your impression of seeing this? Hold on. Hold on. I got to do this part first, right? I fucking told you, people. <laughs> like, this is the thing I've been yelling about with Two Anyone and other groups, fucking time and time again. If you just use the good versions of the song and stop trying to match them up with people who have their ear to the English-speaking population, that music that everyone already loves will most likely be loved by those people if they get a massive chance to hear it. That's how it works. <laughs> like, it's that fucking simple. Oh, and wait, what happened? It got used in a TV ad. And then what happened? Somebody was like, that song is fucking cool. I need to look it up. Oh, I'm going to call my radio station and tell them to play that shit. Which I, I didn't even know you could still do that. I didn't even know that was a thing. But <laughs> like, still, <laughs> fuck off. Like, <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. Thank you, world, for fucking making me feel vindicated in my yelling about the fact that if you just play the music that you already have, and sometimes in English, you'll probably get an English-speaking audience to like and buy your music. Whoa, what happened? You played a song, and people bought it. What the (laughs) fuck? Uh, yeah, you know, sometimes it's a simple adage that quality translates, uh, and a quality catchy song t- will translate no matter what the language. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just kind of a, it seems obvious. And, uh, 
and it's kind of cool and fun and it's it, weird of course you know, to to know that a three-year-old song is getting popular now but uh, you know it's just that's just the way it is uh sometimes uh i'm waiting for that moment like i'm waiting for that moment now where it reaches one of our areas and then we hear it and i'm like oh, i know that song and somebody's like oh man 21 i know all about them and i'm like bitch don't even <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> uh but speaking of uh and uh, but the, the interesting kind of flip side to that news is kind of the rising of, uh, of uh, awareness uh, is the fact uh, that uh, 21 is declined invitations to year-end award ceremonies. Uh, only CL is, will attend uh, the Style Icon Awards for a collaboration stage uh, mm. with, uh, I believe, Diplo, uh, which should be interesting. Uh, it, it, it's, again, coming off of what we talked about previously <laughs> with uh, little things here and there, CL's impending U.S. debut, does this mean anything or does this mean nothing? Uh, to me, this is, this is, this is like March of the Penguins right now. Like something just is weird, you know, like shit just doesn't seem right. Like, like, especially for stuff that they're nominated for, right? And, yeah. and stuff that they're most likely will win. Like, 21 is still one of the most popular groups that there is, even though they don't always have the best showing of, of music year to year in the past, I would say, two years. Yeah. Um, you know, just because it doesn't seem like they promote as hard as they used to. Um, and then with, with all this kind of more and more quiet shit, and then especially coming off the heels of, of the whole kind of scandal with, uh, Park Bomb, like, it, it, it just is like kind of this weird thing that's going on. And it, it, it makes me as a fan. And then in, in that, weird light as somebody who who brings news to the world of it uh it, it it makes me ponder like what the darker intentions are and, yeah. and everything else like with this new group that's coming out that has mysterious members um and things like that like it it, it shows all the signs for a shuffle yeah. of um maybe moving people from one group to another and then pushing CL solo and then maybe one or two other people solo, you know, yeah. like, like there's some weird signs going on and like to, to kind of high mind these things and be like, okay, so we could say like, yeah, well, CL will go solo maybe Park Bomb will go solo. You move Dara and Minzy over to this this new group, you know, and it, it might be good and it might be really awesome, but that that mesh of that unit is what means so much to me. Yeah. Less than the music because I really bought into it, you know? Yeah. Like, I really bought into the fandom that was 21 and, and the girls and the group and, and the dynamic of them. So, it, it's going to be weird to see that disbandment. And yeah. it, it just seems, it seems so impending at the moment. You know, yeah. it just seems it, like it, it, there's, no there's concern. It's concerning to say the least. It's, it's concerning mm -hmm. to say the least of the kind of sense. Uh, obviously it, there's nothing concrete, so we can't say this is, uh, anything is for sure happening, but it's the, the, you know, you can read the tea leaves and you can, uh, wonder and kind of that there, there is something to be concerned about on some level, uh, for them not to at least make a, an appearance, uh, at these award shows that are the, you know, kind of the, of anything. I mean, music shows is one thing. They're, they're not as, they, they don't, they, YG artists don't make appearances on all the music shows. They kind of you know, pick and choose and, uh, when they want to promote on music shows, but they focus on a different form of promoting and focus on singles and a different approach to the music industry. But to th these, these award shows are kind of, they usually are, automatic go-tos you know automatic appearances so it's like uh it is weird uh to to not see them uh 
you know, to not see them be there. Uh, even like, you know, Girls Generation, when they weren't going to make an appearance at Mama, they at least sent, uh, they at least sent, uh, Hyoyeon and Sohyun stumbling drunk into the, to the award show, uh, to, to make an appearance. Those girls were white girl wasted. It was hilarious. Ah, it's the best. Uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to this year's Mama to see who is going to be white girl wasted this time. Uh, my money's on Min. <laughs> uh, my money's on Min uh, and Sohyun as as well because I, I think it's going to be a tradition at least Sohyun because she seems all innocent. She seems all yeah. innocent, proper. She always wears a seatbelt. But you know those girls, those innocent, you know, take those innocent girls. They're always the first ones to uh, dance on a table uh, in the middle of an award show. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's still it's still interesting and concerning uh, these developments. Uh, but speaking of concerning. <laughs> Uh, reactions. We're going to start getting into some, some multiple headlines of fandoms being dumb. <laughs> uh, and we're going to start with one, uh, back to our, our, our friends at JYP. Uh, we have the, we have, uh, 50 Nans Yedin. A uh, fandom of 15 Nans Yedin is mad at her for being a human. Or entitled Lazy Morons. I love that. That's a class, great Asian junkie headline. I love yeah. Asian junkie. Uh, 15 Nans Yedin has angered some members of her fandom due to alleged special treatment from, for some in the fandom and for lashing out at fans who spoke ne- negatively about her getting close with certain fans. Uh, he pr- pretty much points out what happened. Basically, what happened is Yedin kind of, uh, hung out in Hungday with a small group of fans that came out to see her, uh, perform, to see her busking, uh, performance. Uh, she kind of came out and went out, did a little guerrilla performance, and some fans, um, uh, made the trip out to see her, and then they hung out together. Uh, and then, uh, the rest of the fandom lost their, lost their minds <laughs> about it. Uh, they kind of uh, criticized it, said targeting much, get a life. I really don't like you anymore. Do you not see what you did wrong? Do you think it's only about the busking? We all know that you hang out with them at the company, home day, taking care of them on Twitter, going to Sukjin Lake, bringing them to every busking, can it down the road. The whole fun side is your fans. Why are you dividing them? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, to, in her defense, Yedin actually spoke back this is uh, yes i just saw this now if you're going to talk rudely like that i want you to not look at it i became friends with the person and the honey comes to my company so i try to talk to her and be kind to her but it's not like i personally contacted her i replied to her fans uh, the fans who came all the way to see me and take photos of me i also talk to other fans a lot if i'm being unfair or if you're going trying to see me in that way you're only going to see it like that uh Basically, the, the the complaint is saying that she's closer to some fans than others, showing favoritism, blah blah blah, and it's crazy <laughs> uh, because basically what she's she, she actually did is some people actually showed up to some to kind of support her in, in kind of a little scary uh, busking performance, and she showed appreciation for that. And you know, she went, "Hey, let's hang out together," uh, and this is something that we experience ourselves in a different light for when we're talking about uh, content creators on the internet and going to cons. Yeah. If you want to kind of draw an analogy, we, th- there are some of us who go to say dragon con or nerdtacular and some of us, uh, you know, and we're a fandom of, of either, whether you're a fandom, a uh, fan of, uh, the boys at night attack or a fan of those at the frog pants family, uh, for those that don't know, those are podcasting, uh, networks and podcasting institutions. Uh, you make, uh, you, you particular fans go to those events. They go to Dragon Con to see them. They go to Nerdtacular to see them. And we end up hanging out with them. We end up having conversations. I hang out with Justin, have a ton of conversation with him. Uh, we end up hanging out with them. Those of us that don't make it to those events don't get angry at those that do. Or and don't get angry at those content creators for connecting with those fans. 
uh, for coming out. Well, you know what? I'm going to say there are probably people that do, but it's probably just not as vocal. And and I think the reasonable uh, people uh, end up being the majority. Uh, I think it's a different mentality. Obviously, this is not the, the, the majority and not the totality of the fandom. These are just some vocal people. But what what, what do you think, Kaz? I, I think it's the whirlwind of fandom that, that I kind of thought was starting to die down in East Asian pop culture. Um, we've seen it a lot in the Japanese culture. We've seen it here and there in the Korean culture. And I think it's one of these things where you have these groups who are a little bit more grassroots, um, a little bit more used to, to straight up interacting with the people who appreciate them and then sh- be, and then directly showing that appreciation back. You know, uh, Cram Pop is one of those groups that kind of, uh, they came up in that, that system of, of we do for you, you do for us, we do for you, you do for us, we do for you, you do for us, you know? And, and it, it is a great analogy to, to, to go to that content creator style, you know? Because people on the internet are very used to being like, you know, I'm just being, a, you know, even for us, I'm just being some ridiculous person on the internet. If somebody went out of their way to tell me, Hey, I like what you do or, or I see what you do and I think that it's awesome. And I'm in a position to be like, Oh, thank you. You know, I'm, I'm going to show my appreciation for that, you know, in, in whatever little way possible, whether it's, you know, wh- whatever it could be sitting down, having a conversation, like you said, buying them a beer or, or just something, you know, um, and it's to show that appreciation for the time put in to be willing to watch me do this thing, you know, for you and for everyone else, you know, and, and it just is that direct correlation. You're the person right here speaking for, for the fans. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use you as the outlet to say thank you to everyone. But yeah, in, in a, in the smaller sense, I'm saying thank you specifically. And it is also thank you for going out of your way. Like these people in that light went out of their way to come watch them or, or, However, you know, whatever the thing is in in these stories, because there's a couple more of these, you know, that we're going to go through. And it's just one of those things that there are some people that you just you're going to show appreciation to them because they're putting in that effort. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that the next time something happens, you can't put in that same effort and get that same treatment and reward in return. Like you don't have, like, what do you expect them to do to come to your fucking house and perform for you in your living room? Like, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> like, like how entitled do you really need to fucking be to, yeah. for anything? These are people who, who are, are the fandom that you want to be, that you yeah. should strive to be. They're, they're not, they're not trying to be famous. What they wanted to do was go and show appreciation of their fandom for this person. And they yeah. got that in return. They got that appreciation and that love and that dedication yeah. in return. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And that is goddamn a fair fucking trade. And yeah. you didn't you didn't put in that effort. So you can't <laughs> be mad. Like, yeah, it's can't. like, and you talk about Cram Pop. Cram Pop grew up, you know, Cram Pop cut their teeth on, you know, guerrilla performances and uh, hanging out with the fans and, you know, going out and, you know, uh, you know, talk about on this article how, you know, the people that went out and hang, hung out with them and went to the performances, they got to hang out and chat with the CEO on a regular basis. Like the CEO of the, of uh, Chrome Entertainment would be out there and he'd be just chilling, talking to fans and stuff. Like he's, there's a video of, them, of him just sitting with the fans, just having, having a chat, like just regular chat. Just cause like he appreciates that they're there and it's, 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 uh, that's kind of the mentality. Uh, but like, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's dumb. <laughs> uh, and they really need to kind of, uh, put a, it, it, another, you know, it, it, it's really dumb and they need to have a little perspective on these things. Like, uh, like I could see if it was something like, you know, there, there are these few people out there. And, and they fucking pick two out of the fucking crowd of the people who came out to thank them. And they're like, Hey, you two, you get, you two get to come fucking be awesome. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I really doubt that that is what it even is close. To, you know? 
I mean, there there is, uh, and I'm kind of I'm gonna rearrange just for flow, but there is there is a little too much like going to the dorms uh, <laughs> and uh, you know putting messages like we're gonna talk about with uh, there there's there's a little bit too much. So we're gonna talk about uh, block B. Uh, there's an article we're gonna get back to, but I think for flow, let's go back and let's go into the block B story. Uh, block mm-hmm. B tells Saucings uh, to please get the fuck away from their dorm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice and simple. Uh, Block B have always had problems with saucings, uh, especially Zuko, uh, like that. Uh, but the saucings have now taken to drawing and carving things onto their dorm door, which led to the group tweeting out their disapproval. Uh, Block B's leader Zuko uh, tweeted, Visiting our dorm, it's scary. Please stop immediately. He further added, Drawing our attention and being publicly warned. Do you feel accomplished by that? Uh, Park Young, uh, also tweeted, I don't know how you figure out, uh, where we live, but two weeks ago we were surprised to see graffiti in our door. Now when we try to rest, there are people who keep buzzing and ringing our bell and running away. Please, I'm asking you. Uh, Jay here also tweeted a picture of the scribbled on the dormitory door, along with his message to the Saucing fans. I'm thankful that you love us, but this is really scary. <laughs> uh, th- this, of course, is the other side. Uh, then there, you know, there's too much. And this is mm-hmm. kind of scary. And, uh, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, there's really not much else to think other than this is scary and these people need to stop. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there is, this is a level of taking your fanship, fandom and your fanship a little too far. Yeah. Um, everyone is entitled to their privacy uh, to a certain extent, you know, and you have to learn to respect that, you know, like you have to learn that, that you can't, you know, that, that you you can't treat them like the robots that they already get treated. Like, you know, (laughs) that just makes it even more unfair. Like the little bit of time that they get is the time that they get. Like, yeah, you, you would feel way more awesome and way more, I don't, like I don't even know what the word would be to say like if if they would pay attention to you but you got to learn that like you can't take that entitlement too far and it's the same thing that we just talked about before you're you're feeling entitled yeah. because you put time and effort into something and that's all well and good and and it's something you should keep doing but you got to do it in a really smart way like join the fan groups and, 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 you know, go to the shows and, and bring them things and do really nice things for them to show your fanship in good ways. Yeah. Doing it on the level of stalker isn't a good way of showing your fanship. It isn't going to yeah. make them all of a sudden go, you know what? That's the person I want to be with. That's the person I want to welcome into our home, you know, yeah, in, in any light, you know, and, and, you're you you may have all the well thought out intentions in the world but then what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to start to have a takeaway yeah. of of the fandom like you, you, it's going to make people pull away from wanting to be close to their fans from wanting to be friends with their fans you know yeah, yeah. uh it's it's a scary, it's a scary thing. It's like, and, and it brings up the idea that, uh, it's not, these kind of fans are not, obviously not unique to, to, you know, East Asian pop culture and not to unique to K-pop. Uh, but it's a different circumstance when you're talking about a group that I think the dorm, there's a couple of things that make it unique and make you have to think about how things are handled. The, the fact that the dorm system, uh, you know, One Direction doesn't have a dorm. <laughs> they might live near each other, probably live with each other, but mostly out of just necessity, maybe in the early days, but they don't got a dorm. Uh, and two, there really needs to be stronger stalker laws. Uh, even for, especially for uh, adjusting to mm, treating, uh, young people as, uh, the, <laughs> even if they're young, still treating them like they're possibly a danger to the person that they're stalking. Uh, cause it too often, I think that there's 
not enough uh, strong uh, laws when it comes to stalking, uh, which it is what creates these problems. So it's a couple of those things, and it, and it creates an interesting like dynamic for the uh, for the soft things because it's like like they have the access. They have the place that they know they can find them and once they know the address, you know, it's like, uh, and it's a, you know, it's an urban environment. So it's going to, that place is going to be an apartment building. <laughs> it's going to be in an apartment building. So it's going to be an apartment. So there's, and it's probably not going to have a doorman <laughs> and it's, you know, it's not going to have too difficult of an access, you know, uh, it's going to be close to the city. So it's like, there needs to be something to to have to deal with that unique situation uh and the fact that just like anywhere else like you wouldn't be able to get away with doing this here in the states because there would be you would get locked up <laughs> you would find out who you are and you would get locked up uh but yeah it, it is something that uh that that needs to be a consideration uh but back to the, the, the entitlement issue and the, the, what, what you, you got the thing that I wanted. I hate you now. Uh, mm-hmm. thing going back to, you know, harassing an innocent bystander. Uh, exo fans harass poor fan because she got to touch dear leaders, Chanel. Uh, exo fans are a bit nuts. <laughs> I love that they lead off the, that with that, uh, sentence. Uh, which is a little true. Uh, we come to explain that. So, uh, when Chanyo was spotted with a woman, said woman got caught shit for it. Uh, so, uh, an EXO fan, uh, was able to meet Chanyo, uh, cool dude. I like him. Uh, and got a picture taken with him and posted that on Instagram. Uh, then a shitstorm of EXO fans showered her in her stream in her instagram and she was forced to take down the picture and set her account to private uh because people were crazy and she posted an apology uh saying you know dear exo fans okay let me explain i have nothing with him i'm also one of the fans just like you guys i was just taking only one photo with him that was it i'm so scared some of you guys are very mad at me uh that's no no <laughs> This is my private space, so please be good. I'm really sorry if this was annoying. <laughs> uh, aside from that funny little that snow no moment, uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a little, again, it's more of the, uh, how dare you have better than me? How dare you be with Opa? Opa is precious and he's mine, only mine. Uh, mm-hmm. and it's, it's one of those things where it, that, that dynamic sometimes, maybe sometimes you really need to be like Heechul. <laughs> Our boy Heechul has, uh, has uh, said time and time again that he has a much more disciplinary approach to his fans. Like, like he's, he close with them, but he, he knows to put them in their place. And th- that's mm. something that maybe they need to understand and need to kind of uh, bring more thought into. Maybe sometimes tell the fans that, hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't because yeah. because the fandoms equal money and SM doesn't want to disrupt that. Uh, I, I don't know. Well, what, what do you think, Kaz? It, it, it just it harps back to everything else I've just been saying, you know, like this, this, this girl had a chance meeting with is it Sean Yo Sean takes Yo. the picture like, Oh, I, I, I'm a fan. Really? Oh, awesome. You want to take a picture? Like that is, in, that, that is something that happens every day. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, like a fan happens to see somebody that they're a fan of and they're like, oh my God, can we take a picture? And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well, come on, let's take a picture. And she's like, oh my God, I'm getting to take a picture with like somebody from EXL. This is so awesome. You know, like, and everyone else is like, I decided not to go to that cafe today. So I didn't get to meet him. This bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you should be like, oh my God, I'm so jealous. She got to meet him. That's so cool for her. It's like, 
Uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's it, it's a little sad that. Uh, and I imagine she did get some of that, and I imagine she, there were people that were just happy. It's just that some it, it, the volume of those that were negative and hurtful uh, kind of outweighed things, and and uh, caused her to to have to kind of go into hiding the poor thing. Uh, and I don't know, it, it's a little, and, and again, the EXO group has been going through a lot of turmoil, uh, mainly on the M side. Uh, but you know, they, they've got, their fans need to understand that there's a, such a thing as going too far. Even, uh, you know, on a similar tip, we got the fact that, uh, Th- Chaniel, <laughs> Uh, as well as Suho and Bacon, uh, aka Bacon, aka Mr. Taeyeon, <laughs> uh, Mr. Oreo, uh, ha- are enrolled in cyber college now. They actually have to leave their actual universities and they're taking courses online, uh, presumably because, well, them sasangs, yo. <laughs> they can't necessarily just go to class. <laughs> they're exo. Uh, and it's a little, it's a little disheartening that being that these people's obsession with the group that they're a fan of can affect their personal lives so negatively. Like they can't just like go to school, <laughs> which is not, not a unique thing, of course, because there's a, a here artists don't necessarily go to school. You know, well, it's like, it, it, but it's because of the crazy fandom you yeah know? like there could possibly be a situation where where like if, if fandoms didn't act so crazy about these things and, and pedestal these people so much why couldn't they you know yeah. kate it's hudson went to kate hudson went to, to ivy league school you know mm-hmm. you know the people can go to college and uh, and Girls, the members of Girls' Generation went to college, like they went to university, like it, while even while they were perform uh, uh, promoting, they've you know Sohyun graduated from uh, university not too long ago. Uh, you know we've seen pictures of Yuri and and a couple of the other girls, you know, hanging out with other students, uh, drinking beer, <laughs> uh, you know, drinking cans of beer, hanging out with other students, uh, and because the people caught. Uh, caught them uh but you know it, it's as i'm crazy fandoms uh and the crazy harassment that comes with this over on the internet and then translating it, it, it yeah <laughs> i don't know I, I i've lost the ability to make good sentences about all this <laughs> uh it's just i i wish that there was a little bit more of a discipline because the, 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 uh, because one of the main things that we talk about, uh, the, the, the idol culture with this and with, uh, you know, even in Japan and with AKB48 is the idea of the personal connection. They, they, in these idol culture, they create this idea of the, you being personally invested in the personalities and feeling close and this affection back and forth. Uh, even if it's kind of a, a, a fake affection, but you know, kind of create this, uh, emotional attachment, which is not too dissimilar. Like we said with our, you know, we feel a per- more personal, more, uh, intimate connection to our content creators online with podcasts and stuff like that, because we chat with them on a constant basis. Uh, we're friendly with them. Uh, but here's the thing. Most of us are in our twenties and possibly thirties and forties. These girls are in their teens and they take that emotional connection with all those hormones and that immaturity that creates a different pro- set of problems that maybe needs to be treated differently and needs to be possibly corrected. Uh, and, and dealt with, uh, either stringent laws, better communication. But it, the problem is though, that connection makes companies money. <laughs> Fandom, crazy fandoms equal money. And that's why a lot of the companies are not going to do anything to alter that or to possibly diminish that because they'd be losing out on money. <laughs> uh, but, I think, well, here's an example of a company that actually does, did do a little discipline. 
Uh, now going back to the article I did skip, uh, our girl Song Gayan, uh, from Roommate, uh, this is my girl, uh, my MMA fighter, uh, uh, girl, it has, is in, okay, Song Gayan is in psychiatric care for a doo-doo assholes and their chainsaw death tra- threats. Uh, so Song Gayan has been getting a lot of threats, a lot of, uh, angry messages ever since her, uh, MMA debut, uh, one of which was a particularly heinous uh, incident where uh, one uh, particularly mean person posted a picture of a chainsaw, a stock image, but uh, but still, it says, Sung Gayan has continued to... Re- uh, Sung? Okay. Um, there you go. I want to kill Sung Gayan. I seriously feel the urge to murder. I'm going to buy a sawing machine soon. I don't know what I'll use it for, but I really hope you don't make me use it on you. And it's like, and then, uh, you know, once it's revealed, some guy has continued to receive treatment regularly at a psychiatric clinic, uh, in Seoul since August. At this point, it's not certain how much longer she will have to receive help. That's how much she is struggling. She has su- suffered immense psychological pain at such a young age. It's not the first time she's received malicious comment, but it went too far. Her mental state is unstable. She's she's been she's not doing well psychologically speaking because of harassment, and it all stems from dumb shit again. People and kind of overreacting to something, and and so. Going back, the big part of why she started to get a lot of harsh criticism is from her win against an obviously older and weaker fighter. The very obvious fact to anybody that watched that fight, anybody that noticed the booking of that fight, will tell you that she got put up against a tomato can (laughs) for (laughs) the sake of building up her, her, her confidence. Here's the thing. Of course that's the way it's supposed to be. Of course you got put up against a tomato can. That's what you're supposed to do. She's a high-profile debuting fighter for your promotion. You put them up against the uh, enhancement talent. <laughs> like, it's a, th- it's a carryover from wrestling. Like, you know, you obviously you don't fix the match, but... You more or less fix the match. Like you put them up against a kind of a, a, a seemingly kind of a, a lesser achieving talent or lesser profile talent, and you presumably get a decisive victory that shows their you know kind of builds their confidence, and you keep doing that until they're ready to start really competing against your core talent. That's just a thing you do. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do. Uh, but these people kind of uh, don't understand that uh, and are reacting a little too bad for, from that. I mean, that's what they tried to do with Kimball Slice back in the day, but that, that, that didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, it can, it's, it's not always, you know, it's not always a surefire thing, but the, the idea is the same. Oh, well, Kaz, do you have any thoughts on, on, on this and the reactions? It, 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 like, <laughs> it's just been a day of what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, like it just is one of those those things where you just you try to understand why people act this way and how they can act this way and like what what even is the reason for it and. I just, I don't understand it. Like, I, I just mentally don't understand it. It's one of these things that, like, like, makes me go, oh, okay, that's why I hate the human race. Like, <laughs> like it's just, People it's just, suck sometimes. it just is a terrible, idealistic, I have to be the most important in the person in the world, I'm always right kind of culture that, like, it spans the world, really. Like, and it's just one of those things that I just I don't understand. I don't understand how people get there. I don't understand why people are there. I don't understand any of it. It's just yeah. I don't know. Uh, for their part, uh, I think Road FC did a good job of kind of uh, fighting back. They've been doing a good job fighting back. They're gonna, they're going to uh, seek legal action. Uh, 
the 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 fan however did try to apologize in a very unconvincing manner <laughs> uh more or less saying hey you know i i, I threatened somebody one of your friends to, to death with a chainsaw but uh it's it's not all unnerving i i hey I, but i went to your place that's okay and then i went there and i left a note and and drinks you know and and you can you can drink you can drink the drinks it's okay you know i i mean i know i threatened to kill you but hey you, you can drink your drinks uh of course uh uh, uh uh unfortunately for him rota c doesn't give a shit they said later on october 24th the lo- lawyer for sun guy owns management agency rota c entertainment revealed that there will be no clemency for the sit netizen <laughs> lawyer Choi young ki uh revealed to star news the publication of the letter by the netizen in question ha- was actually done before the charge was filed if you look at the content the netizen in- is unilaterally demanding a meeting on a monday because that is the only day he is free in our perspective we cannot accept that as a form of sincere apology we have not heard back from this netizen since we filed a formal complaint now we were even more against the idea of dismissing our complaint than ever translation go fuck yourself with that shit see you in your court see you in court dipshit <laughs> <laughs> it's like and it's a beautiful thing it's like yes and that's how they should react and and i love that uh, like uh obviously this is not uh gonna tarnish their fandom because this was person was a fan was not a fan in the first place but still it you know it, it somebody uh absolutely going after somebody you know because harassment hurts harassment is scary like harassment affects people uh you know repeatedly harassing somebody on the internet affects them psychologically Gamergate. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're not even going to get into that. No. Oh, God. We mentioned it. It makes us part. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Fuck no. y'all. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it is, it's just one of those ridiculous things. Uh, I don't know. It, it is one of those ridiculous things that, uh, makes me angry. <laughs> makes me <laughs> angry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it almost I mean, makes me want to look at silly pretty things. And it's silly and unnecessary, and it it makes everyone on that side, on that that side. And I mean, even even in in this case, the person wasn't necessarily a fan, but you know, they were just some netizen. But I'm gonna call it that net. Those people who who choose. To to either hide behind it and now there are some there are some tough mofos out there in the world who are just like i said it and yeah i said it and i'll say it again um but no matter what it's those people who feel like like they have some entitlement to speak their mind yeah i don't know but if they were if they were right there put on a pedestal in front of the world they wouldn't say shit yeah that's what that's what epic i was talking about in born hater that's that's precisely what they were talking about. Uh, th- th- it's also angering, and you know what? Uh, since we have a couple of minutes that we can kill, uh, let's talk about ugly K- K-pop albums. Because <laughs> I want to, I want to laugh about something. Uh, <laughs> you don't have this article, Kaz. Uh, yeah, so I'll go ahead and read this article. Uh, it's on Beyond Hallyu. Uh, it is an interesting article. So. Top Dog had their anniversary uh, mm-hmm. album, and their cover uh, is horrendous. And that inspired Beyond Hallyu, our friends at Beyond Hallyu, uh, to create an article chronicling the 30 worst uh, K-pop album covers uh, ever. And we got some some gems. Uh, so let's get through them real quick. So I'm going to do this. We're going to go top to bottom, I guess? Top to bottom, because I don't think there was a particular order, so I think we'll just okay. go top to bottom. Uh, Brave Sound, uh, Brave Girls Back to the Future. Just, uh, I guess they went to, the, they're going with the Nickelodeon, uh, ooze. Yeah, make sure you click on some of these to pull, to pull them up bigger. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're interestingly terrible, right? <laughs> so, it's look So, one, yeah, that, that ooze and that lettering. Yes. Of Brave Girls. 
<laughs> but they're using hearts for the R and the, the you know, because like, it makes sense, but the R? Yeah, because I can't even. It looks like Bubble Girl. <laughs> Bubble Girls. Bubble Girls. Girls. Yeah, and then them just down there in the bottom of the picture, like really, really harsh light, where you could tell it's one light, like pointed at the center, because the two girls in the bottom are really lit well. The one girl off to the side with black hair is really lit well. One girl in the back, hardly no light. One girl off to the side is getting lights and shadow. (laughs) So like, this is just terrible. And it looks like they're in the shittiest like ball pit ever. Yes. Like they were in a ball pit that just spilled over. <laughs> Hopefully they got an extra hour in the ball pit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we go uh, on to SM, who's who's who has so has much good, good shit. Uh and our boy Shiny uh with it- with what what looks to be now hard. Let's take this part out of it, right? Really good black and white photo of Shiny, right? Yeah. Really awesome. Then I think someone else was making a different cover <laughs> like like there were two covers being worked on and then they got to like one editor and he didn't know what happened and nobody told him that they were for two separate projects so he just mashed them together <laughs> it was like uh, uh, all right and then and shipped that up <laughs> And there was just nothing they could do about it at that point. Yeah, like, at there that point, because it, it's it's only a Japanese album, so who cares? <laughs> uh, is there you know Japanese for boys? The Japanese album "Boy Meets You." Uh, now we have "Big Bang." Uh, yeah, Big another Bang. Japanese release from a from a Korean artist. This one this is lazy. This is yeah. It's just the logo this and then a lot of color. 40 i'll give him two minutes in photoshop this is yeah. two minutes in photoshop maybe even a stock image you throw the big bang on there you throw the the little light blinder over top of the big bang and then Gaussian you're like blur. boom done. yeah, <laughs> Gaussian <Gaussian> blur. Blur. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to put in perspective rainbow blob was really the this rainbow blob was released at almost exactly the same time as g dragon's heartbreaker mini album so it's like uh this is just kind of this is kind of yeah. inside no that is that even more makes me go oh fuck we're working on this big this gd thing oh the big bang album that's being released in japan we need a cover uh causing uh, blur uh, let me add blur uh, gaussian blur go to the drop downs uh doom add a cup add a little bit of sharpness right there i don't know where the sharpness go uh, you know it doesn't matter okay export <laughs> <laughs> and we're done okay yes. uh go moving on to i use uh, awkward I, early phases uh yeah. nothing nothing spectacular just kind of a little odd little odd choice of fonts and colorings a little odd pose not the not the worst, but not exactly the best. A little awkward beginning, <laughs> uh, before she kind of really hit her stride. Uh, yeah. But now we get uh, Beast. It, just, it looks like a really candid shot of a girl at like a photo booth, but then somebody was like, "Pose," and she was like, "Wait, uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Just <laughs> this guy's taking a picture of me." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my shirt or my hair or my face. <laughs> the dead eyes. Uh, now we have Batust or, or Beast. Uh, they couldn't yep. decide whether they wanted to do Beast or B2ST, so they just went with Burst. <laughs> uh, and they also uh, pre predated uh, Chad Future's entire entire existence with their album cover. Uh, yeah. No one looking at the camera. <laughs> no. In fact, people are covering Don't look at, it. at some point. No. Right? The camera will steal your soul. And that's the story. And only one person with a microphone. Like, was this taking, like, was this picture taken during a concert and then just, like, cut out? Because I swear to God, I see Photoshop lines. Like, I see lasso around this. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Uh, like, I totally see lasso lines. Uh, like yeah. if you look at the, the the blonde kid in the back, there is totally like still lines from the the lasso tool in his yeah. hair, where they like tried to copy around them. Yeah. Uh, nine muses. This one. This one actually nine has muses. a game. Uh, guess which lights belong to which muse. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, else there's some weird shit going on right in the dead center. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is that? That is I so creepy. I, all right, so this, these are two. First of all, goddamn, they're all they all have skinny ass legs. Uh, but chicken legs. These two are there. Okay, these two are there. This one, <laughs> this young lady is missing a leg from the shot. I think her foot's back there somewhere. But she's missing a leg, and that's where it throws off the entire equation. Because <laughs> this young lady is missing a leg. And then you have these two for this one. These two for this one. These two for this one. Well, nobody can see, uh, nobody can see the mouse cursor, so I don't know what the hell I've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> You're but, throwing maddening at me right now. Uh, and, and this one girl on the, the, the third girl in the left looks worried <laughs> she looks so she's worried, worried about her missing leg like <laughs> her leg is in a weird position and she's worried yeah. that it's gonna fall asleep <laughs> her leg is asleep right now and that's it's like oh, and then man. everyone in the center looks really uncomfortable <laughs> like there is some uncomfortableness going on right now oh uh, my god she she is something caught the the third from the right's attention uh and and uh, the farthest to the right is trying not to make eye contact with anybody. So my theory is the furthest from the right farted. <laughs> <laughs> the, she's the third from the right is curious. And then the, the, in the middle, they're just uncomfortable with the whole situation. Oh yeah. No, definitely. Uh, going, moving on. We're going to, we have uh one where it's just floating people. Mm-hmm. Got to go quick. Cause, uh, well, we don't have that much room, but, uh, we have Happy Pletus. I don't know what's going on there. It's just people and yeah. font. Uh, nothing major. Uh, we have Teen Top. Uh, come into my world. Or come into the world. Uh, there's, there's just, there really is something unsettling about mm. uh, an album called Come Into the World. And uh, they're naked. Also, one of them is 14 in this picture. Yeah. See, okay. Here's the thing, right? I, I could kind of see the concept of just like, like, you know, coming to the world, kind of like, you know, brand new to the world kind of thing and all that. But why is the one dude's head turned to the side and no one else's? Everyone else is straight <laughs> on looking at you. But this dude was so like, no, nah, man, I got this design in my head and you got to see it. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, yo, I just came for the barber shop, yo. I got this tight. Look at this. Yeah. It's like, okay, fine. Can I put my pants on now? Uh, <laughs> I'm taking a headshot. So why do I need my pants off? It's, uh, it's part of the artistic uh, vision. It's what inspires me. <laughs> why are uh, your pants nine. off? Uh, yeah, number nine. Uh, we got to have our girls, Wonder Girls, uh, with a, you know, uh, I think taking a, a page from, uh, I think, uh, 2000s hip hop records, uh, <laughs> with their black cat suits and a looming Akon, uh, over them. That uh, is just creepy as fuck. Is it, is it supposed to be a heart? Like, is that what that, it's, I think thing? so. Uh, uh, yeah, a robot. I, I zoomed heart. into it in the, cause it's also in the, the money, uh, in like money, um, so if you zoom into that, it looks like a heart down there. But then yeah. you put Akon in it up here, uh, and then put words and all kinds of other and then like weird, weird thing, like shrapnel. I don't know, like a heart grenade, and then like robots. Yeah. Uh. Ooh. Yeah. But moving on. <laughs> I'm moving on to epic. Oh my uh, god! <laughs> awkward beginnings. <laughs> <laughs> Tableau's got a kitty. And I gotta I gotta show Tableau's kitty. <laughs> Two cuts has a bat. <laughs> Two cuts has a bat, so he's he's still, you know, maintaining the, the kind of hard image, but uh Tableau has a kitty and, and frosted tips. Uh and uh your boy Mithra's got a parasol. Dude's they come that, a long way. Yeah, they have, man. Uh, Holy shit. 
There's nothing much to say about that. Uh, Jay Park, uh, after being forced to t- t- 2 p.m., apparently became a demon. <laughs> uh, 2 p.m. were faring better at the time. 2 p.m. weren't faring better at the time because they, they went all pleather. They got attacked by a pleather monster. Yeah, that is straight up like in sync, uh, Backstreet Boys styling right there. Like several years after the fact, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, Five Dolls, I think, wins the award for laziest. <laughs> yeah remember that thing we were talking about with stock images Ooh. yeah headphones that stock, font, that stock font and those is you know just. yeah <laughs> all right let's get through these uh speed <laughs> which speed is just a hot mess uh, it, it, it harps back to to nsync's like circus album but at, their cover was done way better <laughs> yes like, uh God, I have no idea who piggy dolls are, and I'm, I imagine I'm glad I don't. Uh, <laughs> but let's move on to T Voxes or TV Excuses awkward J Rock phase. Oh, man. I enjoyed that. <laughs> that is some lens flare right there. They are shining. Like, there needs to be guitars and a drum set and, like, a, a fucking dragon sword in here somewhere. <laughs> like, uh, apparently, oh my- apparently they thought, uh, fuck K-pop, let's do Visual K. <laughs> yeah. uh, moving on. Red, Red Velvet, Velvet, which is, this one is actually a new one. This is um, a new one. Uh, I don't mind. I, I think I understand that it's a, a little uh, busy. Uh, and they yeah. do kind of, uh, they do, uh, mention that it does have some Frida Kahlo our influences. Second. It's a little Also, busy. though, the second cat. <laughs> <laughs> the cats. <laughs> it's kitty. Cat. You gotta have the cat. And a deer. <laughs> and flamingos. Yeah. There are kind of animals in there. You, you, you can play animal bingo with that. Yeah. Uh, Nega Network's, uh, LC9, uh, which you talked about, apparently decided that I have, uh, the members of, uh, of Xanadu. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nothing special. The, 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 the <laughs> one dude does look like Rat Monster. I can't, I can't not see Rat Monster, though. He came before. So, Rat Monster looks like so, him. We, we went from one that was really lazy to one that had way too much time put into it because the amount of Photoshop on their faces, is a bit much. Yeah. <laughs> like they have much. no pores. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Their skin is smooth as plastic. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's an album called Skirmish. So it's like it doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, no. Secrets, uh, less uh, imaginative uh, album cover. <laughs> Stand we'll there, see. take a picture. All right, stamp it. We need, we need, we need to have a, a, a an interesting font. Uh, make the S a music note thingy. All right, done. <laughs> it's music. Uh, Moving on to your girls, girls' generation. Girls' uh, generation. This looks like a DVD for yeah. like. A mystery, like you know, a bunch of girls are gonna solve a mystery together. Yeah, this you know, is like, a, it doesn't look like an album cover. Yeah, this is like if they were like remember when the Olsen twins had the, like all those like oh yes like, movies. yes, it looks like one of those kind of either like, that or just like a, a book, like a like a Nancy Drew or like a no like Sweet Valley High like book, yeah. like that era of like book covers. <laughs> It's like it girls' totally generation like solved the mystery of the of the of the uh, missing uh, thing of oh, the school murder, and yeah. will they be able to make it to prom on time? <laughs> Find out. And will which boys will ask them out? VP Basic with BP going basic. with the, the eerie. Well, they said Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but this harps to like fucking Children of the Corn with me, with everybody <laughs> having blonde hair. Like <laughs> Outlander, <laughs> and again more lens flare than you can shake a stick at. Yeah, it's oh like, it's like we were going into heaven. <laughs> uh, 
you get now we have uh, our Christmas uh, entering uh, our Christmas <laughs> offering. Uh, oh, M Black. <laughs> oh, M Black. Who, who decided? Hey, what's what's more Christmassy than standard light bulbs? <laughs> With with fucking like with uh like long exposure flare put on. Do you even think those light bulbs were lit? Like, there's no way that those light bulbs they're holding are actually. Well, I guess no. they could have been, and there could be cords from coming from them, and somebody did take the time to like uh a clone stamp the the cords from the light bulbs out. Yeah, which goes to some time put in, and you know there was time put in because that that flare effect has to be done in Photoshop. You can't yeah. get a light bulb to make that flare effect, no matter how hard you try or how many pictures you fucking take of it or how long your exposure is. And you know it's an effect because the other light bulbs in their hands don't have that effect on them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's one, and then one that doesn't. One that does, one that doesn't. One that does, one that doesn't. It's like, it's like uh, yeah, it's like uh we got half of them done. It's like all right, that's fine, that's fine. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, enough. Yeah. Right, you know what? I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'm we're done. We're done. <laughs> yeah. we're done. It's too much work. Uh, moving on, another Christmas disaster. <laughs> oh my. Is uh, it not? That looks Easter as fuck, bro. Doesn't yeah, even... apparently it's supposed to be, a, 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 but it's called Pinky Santa. <laughs> but they decided to go with Easter. Ooh. I think this uh, one is making me sick. <laughs> this is this is giving me a cavity. So let's move on. Yeah, yeah please. Uh, going taking it old school. Uh, with baby, baby box. box, baby yeah. box. Now, in in the person that wrote the article, article did give a caveat. I was like, yeah, graphic design technology wasn't the thing it was now, but they could have done a little bit better job of not you know, having those fonts running into each other. Like, yeah. uh, but damn them early 2000s uh of course dsp uh not the only ones that could that will pull off the running the letters running into each other sm with uh the ses album went ahead i don't even just, i don't even know where to start reading that i don't I, I, no. I, I, I think you, there's a I, I think eugene i know there's they have a member named eugene but I, I, yeah, I'm not playing word bingo with that. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. Uh, another and new the, one, DGNA. New that's gonna come out. Oh, it's, oh, I thought it was a play. <laughs> <laughs> Is this not Lion King too? <laughs> Is this not the poster for Korean Lion King? I swear they, to God, no, it's uh, Korean Lion King. <laughs> album really go. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, okay, another game. Guess. The name of the artist and the name of the album for this cover. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, one. Uh, are, okay. Uh, but Ego, Ego Bomb? What? Where did that come from? <laughs> I don't. I don't even know where to start. One shot. One mic. One mind. One mic. One life. Rapper. Bottom to the top. Oh. Wait, that's where Drake got that line from. <laughs> um, ego bomb. M- music vibe. Pe- th- no, these are all just random ass words. <laughs> what is the name of this album? Uh, this is by Ego Bomb's uh, Quanu, uh, and the album is Musician Vibe Passion. Still doesn't make sense. What? What are all those other words for? <laughs> God damn it. Uh, our uh, book, JYP. JYP. Uh, uh, and his, uh, his, his, uh, uh sexy legs. <laughs> and them shorts. This creep. I don't know what's going on. He looks like one of the German dudes from freaking, uh, the Big Lebowski. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like he's, we, we don't even know what's in his arms. What is he holding? Is it a snooker cue? Like they, the, the, the yeah, even what? even the writer for this article did not know what was in his arms. I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say it looks like a pool cue. Yeah, or a uh, cane, like a pimp cane. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, we're we're gonna spend too much time trying to figure that out because this is a worthless effort. Um, a girl's what's up made the list. Uh, yep. with good reason. Because to be fair, this is just a single release, but. 
No. Just, just, yeah. just no. It's a terrible picture. It's terrible font. Like, stretched it's terribly. Just, it's stretched terribly, yes. It's like a really candid shot that looks like it should have been rejected. Like, oh man, like, they're out of focus. Like, they don't even look like they're on that beach. Like, <laughs> like they don't even look like they're actually there. So, yeah. I don't uh, know how that was used. Uh, and then finally, we come to the headliner of the article, Top Dog's Anniversary. Goddamn, this is a terrible, like, product sh- shot of all of them. <laughs> like, they're so dear in the headlights. There's no expression on anyone's face. It is so blank. <laughs> and the 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 uh, outlines are so obvious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Photoshop outlines are so obvious. It's sad. Sad. Do better. Do better. Hire some nerds to do better. Like just come on. Come on, man. Uh I still I still say the epic high one is the one that got me the best. Yes. I was not expecting that and that fucking popped out at nowhere on me. <laughs> fucking Teflon with that fucking cat, dude. Like Jesus fucking Christ, man. <laughs> oh my yes. God. Oh. Uh, let's, let's let, let that be the last image, uh, so that we can have a, end this on a positive note. On a hilarious right. note. Uh, yes, yes. that's it for us. Uh, Kaz, what yep. have you, what are you up to in your neck of the woods? Um, people know the list of things to check out. So about that me slash King Kaz for any and everything that I do, all the links are there. You can keep up with everything that is going on. On, but it's mainly Delta Juliet Mike, Rivelli Podcast Network. Check out all the amazing podcasts that go on, like, for Record Breakers or just Record Breakers Podcast, uh, the Fanny Pack Wrestling Podcast, and then uh, this here show here, this mm-hmm. one that you're already listening to. So if you're already listening to it, you don't need to check it out because you're already checking it out. But tell someone else to check it out. Mm-hmm. Be Share, like, subscribe, tell people about it, Sec- uh, subscribe to us on iTunes. Uh, subscribe to us on Stitcher. Tell people that we're everywhere. You know, sa- just like South Warfare, we're people, everywhere. And if you're one of those people who are like, no, I like going directly to a website and, and listening to the file there because I don't support iTunes or Stitcher or any of those other podcasting apps, you could do that. You can go right over to kpoppodcast.com and there check out our show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We even have download links because Quarkspace enabled the thing of to just click a checkbox to say show the download link. So you can just download it. You don't even have to use this the, the web player. So just download it. There you uh, go. But that's it. Uh, Easy. Enjoy your week. Until next time. Hasta los huevos. No. Fighting. Fighting.